yo, pit crew. This week on Pit Beyond the Script. You, you know, I thought we did some really good things. Uh, I, I thought we were really prepared. Uh, I thought our energy was great. I thought we were very connected. Made a bond, made a bond with the coaches, uh, made a bond with teammates, and and from there, I just committed. Now I'm in a place where I can accomplish my goals. I mean, I want to be a national champion, and I had to do something to put myself in that place. All this and more on this edition of Pit Beyond the Script. It starts as a game, a gathering of friends. And slowly, as some begin to sit back, others stand out. The joy of playing turns to passion. And as the skills develop, so do the minds. And they begin to seek challenges, peers, and mentors to further their abilities and opportunities. The love and passion becomes a thirst for people in a place We're gonna show everybody else in the country who we are. that will embrace and push a hunger for excellence. Flinch the ACC. And to be in and among champions. These are the dreamers, scholars, leaders. These are the guides, teachers, mentors. And this is the opportunity, the challenge, the place. This is Pit Beyond the Script. My name is Zach Kiesendahl. I'm a junior at Pitt, majoring in communication, minoring in political science, and completing the digital media certificate. Uh, and this is my Pitt story. Pitt, I knew definitely was the right place for me. Usually I visited in the springtime, so I was able to see all of the students outside, taking advantage of the green spaces, seeing them with all the activities. And it was just something that, you know, I didn't see at the other campuses that I visited. There's 600 plus student letter organizations here. That alone is intimidating for a lot of people. So I tried to find one thing and said, hey, this is gonna be my thing my first year. And that was the Pathfinder organization, which are the student tour guides here. Hi everybody, welcome to the University of Pittsburgh. My name is Zach, I'm gonna be your tour guide today. But once you're involved in something, that's gonna open up a lot of networking opportunities and connections that you can make with either other students, with alumni, with advisors, faculty, staff, CEOs, big business partners in downtown at the major companies that we have headquartered here in Pittsburgh. If you're interested in trying to find something, there is someone or something out there that's going to put you in the hands or in contact with the person that you need to get in contact with. Questions on the cathedral, anything like that? Fantastic, we're gonna head right outside. We'll talk a little bit about transportation here on campus. Like I said before, definitely get involved, but don't over-involve yourself. It's really important to remember that you're a student before anything else. So focus on your studies as much as possible, but if you're just going from your room to your classes every single day, you're missing out on a ton of different things, especially at Pitt, whether that be student-led organizations, jobs, internships, networking opportunities, connections, meet and greets, what have you. Um, definitely try to keep one foot in the door to your future and make those connections as often as you can. Jeff Capel Show here on the Pit Panthers Radio Network. <laughs> we want to just try to work on us. Going to take it all the way from this Johnson detonates. <laughs> I honestly put in a lot of mental work. Their love of basketball. Basketball is, is really my vehicle. The cut by Tony. I really appreciate you know, Pitt. Jeff was uh, trying to make sure you were entertained. The Jeff Capel Radio Show, Fridays at 4 p.m. on AT&T Sportsnet. I know of athletes of, of color that were, I thought were as good as me or better, but never had the opportunity. So we slipped through. And if you'd have said then 
that I would be one of the first to play football at Pitt, I'd say you're crazy. But that's how life can change with over a few years. You know, Jimmy Joe Robinson started with me. He would tell me, Herb, you couldn't play football. I said, yeah, but you played three years after I quit and concentrated on track and I scored against Notre Dame. He said, yeah, you were lucky. I said, I wasn't lucky. You look at that run I made. <laughs> 57 yards. Yeah, and it was 67,000 people there. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a lot of fun with that. For Champagne and two. Hello and welcome to Pit Beyond the Strip alongside men's basketball coach Jeff Capel. I'm Rob King of AT&T Sportsnet. Thanks very much for being with us. Coach, I want to take you back to the game against number 14, Virginia. You played a really solid 24 minutes back and forth with the team, lead changes. What did you like about the way your team performed over that first stretch of the first half and then the first four minutes of the second half? You, you know, I thought we did some really good things. Uh, I, I thought we were really prepared. Uh, I thought our energy was great. I thought we were very connected early. And uh, the game plan that we put together, I thought we did a pretty good job of executing some of the ways we wanted to attack some of the things we wanted to do defensively. They made some adjustments and hurt us a little bit when they went smaller. Uh, we couldn't capitalize on some of the things on the offensive end that we had during that time, really the last three and a half minutes of the first half. Uh, that's the only segment that we didn't win of that first half. They made us pay. Um, really proud of how we started the second half. And then we had about a five, six minute stretch where we made mistakes and what good teams do, and it's what they did, they made us pay for every one of them. And uh, the game got away from us, but our guys fought. We fought back, we, we cut it to seven and had some opportunities at the end, but just couldn't get closer. I wanted to talk to you about that five or six minute segment because I'm sure that there were some things you'd like your team to do, but at some point you just say, wow, they're, they're hitting every shot in sight. Yeah, you do say that, but also, just think about the breakdowns that we have, um, you know, that we had during that time, I should say. We, we took a really, really difficult low percentage shot when it was 38, 36 their way. And then we, we didn't get organized in transition. That's something that we had talked about and done a great job up to that point. Um, they don't push the ball, so it's easy to get, it should be easy to get organized. And we had a matchup because we didn't point and talk and they made us pay for it. You know, and again, they're an odd matchup because their best shooters are their bigs. And your bigs are trained all the time to be the guys that help. And in this game, you have to have the discipline to not overhelp. And during that time, it comes from a place of trying to do some really good things, but we made some mistakes and they made us pay. And right now, Xavier Johnson and his Pittsburgh team picking it up in the second half. Sometimes shot selection also comes from a place of trying to do really good things. Is that, again, if we continue to talk about the evolution of the program, is that something that was isolated to this game or is that something you have to be wary of? Because so many guys are thinking, hey, if I can make a shot here, I can get us back in it instead of we can get us back. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I, mean, that I think that happens on every team. And especially if you have some good players, um, you know, some guys individually that are good. I, I, I think that happens. It, it certainly happened in, in the Virginia game. Uh, but it, it's happened in just about every game for us. And the thing that you hope is that, you know, as, as you go forward, it doesn't happen as frequently. Um, and guys understand the difference between a good shot, a great shot, and a bad shot. You talked about and alluded to the comeback for your team. Once again, showing the fight. You used words after the game. You played hard. We played together. We fought. Did you like that aspect of what your team did? I love that aspect. I mean, I, I thought we did some really good things with the exception of that stretch, that, that from about the 1530 mark um, until about the 10 minute, nine and a half minute mark. That's where it got away. But after that, you know, we, we regrouped, you know, we, we started getting some stops. We, we, we were able to get in transition. We were able to rattle them a little bit down the stretch, force them into some turnovers. They're one of the lowest turnover teams in the country. Um, and so I thought we did some really, really good things. But when you're playing, I think they're one of the better teams in the country with the way they're playing right now. 
So it's a team that has championship DNA. The last time there was an NCAA tournament, they're the champs. Um, and so when you're playing them, your mistakes can't, I mean, they have to be minimal. And we just had that stretch where we, it got away from us. And then you're getting ready for Louisville until you're not getting ready for Louisville. Uh, again, we talked about that a couple of times over the course of these shows. How difficult is that for the team? Just again, mentally thinking, hey, listen, we, we have some things we're, we're building off. We had a, a really good win and then we had a good performance against the top team. And, and now we don't have a game we thought we had. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the way we started as a coaching staff. We started hearing it a little bit earlier that the possibility of that game happening was, was, was very low. Then we started hearing about other possibilities, who you could possibly play, who could, you know, you know who they could give us in replacement of them. Um, and then on Sunday, you know, you found out that that wasn't going to work. And so we were going to have some time. And so I try to find the positive in it. You know, one of the things is that we're banged up. This time of year, everyone's banged up. So it gives us a chance to get a little bit of a rest, to give our guys a couple of days off. It gives us a chance to have some practice time to work on some different things that we think could help us down this stretch run. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and their opponent coming up on Sunday, Georgia Tech, when we resume on Pit Beyond the Script. First, a look at Xavier Johnson. That's coming up next. Not worry about the rim. Oh, what a tough drive. Johnson takes the contact, too. You talk about a determined effort into the lane. Xavier Johnson. So you're talking about a player with over a thousand points and over 400 career assists as well. My dad got me into basketball, to be honest with you. He threw a ball at me when I was two. From there, I just took off with it. And this is a guy, I mean, I know he's a junior, but he never, never played point guard in high school at all. And he uh, made him into a pretty good one in college. I mean, it was always, always a desire to play to play Division One basketball since I was in middle school. When I realized I could play play Division One basketball was when I was in eighth grade, uh, and I took up to score 56 points in the game. From there, it, everything just took off. Uh, I, I got recruited by one of the prestigious high schools in, in America, and from there, everything just lifted up. And yeah, I got, got I, I got better each year I played in high school, uh, and it, everything just got put together. Xavier Johnson going coast to coast. I chose to be here because, I mean, the environment. I wasn't really the, really the main choice of it. It was my dad. My dad really fell in love with it first. I, I was trying to act nonchalant on my visit, try to act cool, act like nobody knew what my choice was. But I mean, I, I knew it was home though when I first stepped in the building. And, I, and from there, we just got together, made a bond, made a bond with the coaches, uh, made a bond with teammates. And, and from there, I, I just committed. I like everything everything about Coach Cable. Down to earth guy. Uh, he'll tell you the truth, and he won't he won't ever lie to you. Honestly, what I like about him is the how he, how he handles adversity. Uh, it's easy for a coach to coach to put his head down, head down when we're losing on a losing streak and, and just just quit. He never did that. He always always been resilient and, and came back and, and and tried to get better every day. Always. We'll continue to get better at this stuff. All right, keep taking steps. I mean, I knew this program was, was the best fit because, I mean, I look at it as my life, uh, honestly, because my life I always been underrated. So, putting it in the basketball at, at, the, at this college level and for this program, it, it's always it, it, when it fell off, it hasn't, it hasn't gotten back to the top yet. So, I mean, I always been a been a rebuild person, been an underdog. So, I mean, I just look at it as myself, honestly. X man. Brains it, man. Dunks it with authority. Piss put me in the, be in the best position. That's one reason why I, why I came here and, ch and chose this position. E everything uh, off the court, uh, that helped me off the court and, and on the court as well. Uh, this is Xavier Johnson, uh, point guard, and you're watching Pit Beyond the Script. It was all the way in. Big shot scorer, X Man, off balance. He said, I think I'll put this in. And X Man with 30 points. Jeff Cable Show here on the Pit Panthers Radio Network. <laughs> we wanted just to try to work on us. Going to take it all the way for this. Oh, oh. Johnson detonates. <laughs> I honestly put in a lot of mental work. Their love of basketball. Basketball is, is really my vehicle. The cut by Tony. 
I really appreciate you know, Pete. Jeff was uh, trying to make sure you were entertained. The Jeff Cable Radio Show, Fridays at 4 p.m. on AT&T Sportsnet. Casey Guerra, Pitt Studios, joined by Damar Hamlin, former safety of the Pitt Panthers. Damar, it feels weird to say former Pitt Panther. How have you been doing? You recently just competed in the Senior Bowl, and now you're training in Florida. Yeah, uh, it feels weird for me even um, <clears throat> even saying that I'm not now. Uh, but um, I've been doing well. I've just been working hard um, down here in Florida. I've been training. Um, the Senior Bowl was great. It was a, it was a great experience. You got an interception in that Senior Bowl. How was that? How excited were you? And you got to celebrate with some former teammates. Uh, I was super excited, you know. Um, it was like the fourth quarter. We had just took the lead back. Like, all we needed to end the game was a, was a turnover. I mean, I got the pick. So, um, you know, I ran down to the sideline, uh, did my little celebration, whatever. And it was, just, it was just pretty cool. Like, I looked up to my, my little brother's face. He was just like, like he wasn't even looking at me. So it was cool to just experience that with him. How was it working with the coaching staff? You were with the Dolphins coaching staff. What was that like? Um, you know, that was fun. They were uh, they were really a detailed and intense uh, staff, but you know, they like to have fun. Um, they, they preach going after the ball and you know, everything that you want, all your hopes and dreams are, are within the ball. So uh, that's something big that they, that they, they preach to us. Um, getting the ball back, any chance we get, it was a really fun week working with them. How invaluable is that time with an NFL coaching staff during that week of practice and in the game? Really valuable, you know. Uh, it's like getting an experience uh, of what the NFL is all about, um, like a, a pre-experience. Uh, like I said, I was just trying to be a sponge. I was literally writing down everything I heard. Um, they gave us a notebook at the beginning of the week. My notebook was almost full, just me writing down everything I can. You decided last year to come back, which you could have easily moved on and declared for the draft. Looking back, how important was it for you to stay an extra year as a Pitt Panther? Oh, it was really important, and I, I, benefited, from, I benefited from it so much. Um, but, you know, it was really important. Um, one thing I definitely wanted to do was finish my degree. And me coming back, I, I was able to do that, um, you know, but I was just able to learn so much more about ball and just focus on me, my family. I even told Coach Narduzzi, like, when he came down to the senior bowl, that, like, I, I really felt like I've been here because I just felt so prepared for the moment, you know. Well, Damar, I really appreciate the time. I know the Pitt fans do as well, and hopefully we'll catch up around Pro Day and after the draft. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. How to Pitt. Thank you so much. One thing about me, um, me and my friend really want to pet raccoon. Like my best friend, we want to raise a baby raccoon. They're really easy to find. In high school, I was a valedictorian. I did volleyball, uh, indoor and outdoor track, and basketball. I chose Pitt because of the family atmosphere here. From day one, they made me feel like I was a part of the family, and I think that was really big for me. I would consider myself a very defensive player. I've never been as focused on scoring because I know that defense ultimately gets offense. My favorite basketball player would probably be Dennis Rodman because he just like reminds me a lot of myself when he plays with like so much emotion. 
My number came from softball and it just kept that number. I liked it. And I liked the cheer that came with 13. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. I don't know why. I just always liked that one. <laughs> I'm Tracy Houston from Roanoke, Virginia, and I'm a freshman forward. Together, we've defeated polio, pioneered organ transplantation, and engineered the television. We've nurtured generations of brave artists and big thinkers. We've won national and conference championships and given back to our city, our region, and the world. At Pitt, we've never been afraid to take bold action and forge ahead. And you, the Pitt community, our community, has always helped to make that possible. On this Pitt Day of Giving, we're asking you to join us again to conquer yet another challenge. Like so many other places in the world, life at Pitt across all of our campuses has transformed dramatically in the last 10 months. But we've worked together, adapted our behaviors, and led by example to keep our Pitt family safe and healthy. And now we need your help to continue to care for each other while we learn, innovate, grow, and plan for a brighter future. Together, your gifts will fund our scholarships, strengthen our academic experience, elevate our world-class research, empower our student organizations, drive Pitt Athletics forward, and support the Pitt programs that mean the most to you. On February 23rd, please join me. Please join me on Pitt Day of Giving. This team returning a ton of talent here in 2021. Yeah, they definitely are. And it starts with Mickey Phillippe at 133, a stacked weight class in the nation. There's a look at Mickey Phillippe, the number four wrestler in the nation at 133. I got into wrestling whenever I was in kindergarten, I believe. I really wanted to do it, but my, my dad actually didn't want me to do it just because he was a basketball player and uh, he wanted me to do that. I just, I wasn't a big fan of basketball and I thought it looked fun to like kind of beat someone up. Scramble situation. Let's see who comes out on top. Hit in a pretty good position. Phillippe trying to steal as he cuts the corner and gets the two. Next thing you knew, like not only I loved it, but he loved it. And from there, the rest was history. I mean, we just, we wrestled every weekend from the time I can remember, and uh, it was it was great. He's just gotten better. He's improved every year. And when Carl talking to a coach, Lean, he said that he just feels that Mickey Phillippe is better than every wrestler in every position. My wrestling style, it's really just like controlling the center, controlling the mat. I just try to be, like my style is hard to explain because I try to be good in all positions. I try to be good on my feet, on top, and I mean, I try to get out. I try to score where I can and score as much as I can. Good shot there from hey, Phillip. Hey, that was a nice shot by Mickey there. That, that was a good job avoiding, avoiding any confusion there in the, uh, on the takedown and avoiding the funk. Ever since I got here, it's been, it's been home. I, I love the city. I love the school. I love my team. My team has become like brothers to me and my, my family's nearby so I can go and see them anytime I want. In position to, to get caught with anything it really makes the opponent work extremely hard. And coach Gavin's an awesome coach and I, I think it's a testament to the program. You can see that we're doing a lot better since he's got here and uh, we're growing. And I mean, I think the sky's the limit. I don't see, think coach Gavin wants anything less than a national title as a team. And I think over time, we're gonna become a national championship program. Philippi has a very good, what's called a gas tank. I mean, he, he's always in a position where he doesn't look like he gets tired. Now I'm in a place where I can accomplish my goals. I mean, I wanna be a national champion and I had to do something to put myself in that place. And now I think I, I am on that path and I, I don't see why I can't do it. I just gotta continue to grow every day and just try to be the best I can in all aspects of life. Life after after wrestling at Pitt, I guess. I mean, it's probably going to be more wrestling. <laughs> I love the sport, and I mean, I want to continue to compete as long as I can. I really don't see life without wrestling. Uh, I think I'm always going to be involved in it in some way. I'm Mickey Phillippe. I'm a Pitt wrestler, and you're watching Pitt Beyond the Script.
Welcome back to Pit Beyond the Script once again with head coach Jeff Capel. And coach, we talked about this week, this unexpected week of practice. You talked about the guys being banged up, maybe a chance to rest. How about for some of the freshmen, some of these guys, whether they've hit the wall or just haven't had as much playing time, what have you, is this a good opportunity for them to get back in the groove a little bit as well? I hope so, because we need them. Um, they're talented. They've had some good moments for them, for us this year, but we need them to be really good. You know, we're, like I said, we're banged up. So even in a couple of the workouts that we've had so far, we've held some guys out. And so it gives opportunity for these guys to get valuable practice time, you know, to get time with the first group, um, you know, to get time with some of the guys that are going to play a lot of minutes and to hopefully give them some confidence, to give us even more confidence in them, um, you know, so they can get in and help us. You know, normally if you have a schedule, you might have a game and then at some point you're getting ready for the next opponent. With a week between games, uh, as you get ready for Georgia Tech, when do you begin focusing on them? Do you begin at the beginning of the week or are you more focused on what you guys are trying to accomplish? I'm more focused on us right now at the beginning. We'll start with Georgia Tech on Thursday. Um, you know, we'll start our preparation. As a coaching staff, we've already started to prepare. I've already started watching tape, trying to get a better feel for them. I think they're a really good team. They're a veteran team. They have very, very good guards. They're older, um, you know, and, and they were in the top half of our league last year. They were one of the better teams. Alvarado, obviously, he's one of the senior guards you're talking about. And then DeVoe gives him a guy on the inside as well. He's a junior, Alvarado's a senior. They're surrounded by other veteran teams. But can you talk a little bit about that inside-outside presence? You know, I, I think Alvarado is one of the better guards in our league and certainly one of the best competitors. I mean, he is a really, really competitive kid. He's tough. He plays the game with great joy. Um, and he can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Obviously, his scoring. I was looking at the stats earlier. He's shooting an unbelievable percentage from the floor, and that's amazing especially because he's a guard and he's not like one of these big guards. He's a small guard. You know, DeVoe gives them a guy that can score it on all three levels. He can shoot the three, he can penetrate, he can get to the basket. He's a big, strong kid, plays the game at his pace, um, but as a veteran guy has had huge, huge games. And then inside, Moses Wright is, is probably one of the best stories in college basketball. He's a guy that's a very, very late bloomer from North Carolina. You know, wasn't a highly recruited kid, but it just worked, worked, worked. It's changed his body. He's one of the better athletes we have in the ACC and is having a heck of a season for them. As you look at the schedule, and I don't know if you look beyond a game or two, fans obviously do. Um, and we don't know whether some of these games are going to be rescheduled or not that you've missed. But you're playing teams now that are going to be really important for you as far as where your positioning winds up in the ACC. It's hard to make kids maybe focus on that game and not keep that bigger picture in mind? How do you make sure you shrink that back to just Georgia Tech on Sunday? Well, we really try to just focus on that. You know, I've learned in my first two years here with our team that when we try to think big picture with them, get them to think that, then we get all messed up. <laughs> um, we, 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 we're not at that point right now. So right now, to be honest with you, we're, we're, we're literally trying to take it day by day. We're trying to worry about the day. Can we win the day? Can we, you know, win our off day today? You know, and that may mean some guys getting in and getting treatment, getting, you know, getting some extra work, getting some shots on their own, getting rest. Um, and then can we come back tomorrow and be really, really good tomorrow as we start our preparation? And then hopefully we can be at our best by the time we get to Sunday down in Atlanta. Coach, thanks very much and good luck on Sunday down in Atlanta. And thanks to you for watching this edition of Pit Beyond the Script. Uh-oh, Tony's going to try it for three. He trains a three.